Okay. Okay. You're good. You're golden. <sighs> 30 seconds. Okay. Oh, if you want to drive a point home, that's your camera, but don't look at it unless you're like wanting to like, make eye contact with the, mm -hmm. with the peoples, because I mean, that's mine. Hello, and welcome to our pod vision. We are I Stand Corrected. Uh, my name is Angel Camanzuli. I'm the patient liaison for Tarpon Total Healthcare. We're your host for this TV show. And at our office, we provide spinal adjustments that you can trust when we want to relieve your pain without the need for surgery or drugs. And this is our pod vision. So this week is episode 15. I stand corrected on that one because I got stuck in the past and was thinking it was 13. Uh, so for episode 15, I have a lady that I absolutely adore. I've gotten to know her very well over the last couple of years. This is Cheryl Sharp with Palm Tree Dentistry. And I'm so appreciative that you're here with us today. Thank you, Angel. I'm glad to be here with you all today. Yep. So uh, I have a question. Okay. <laughs> How long have you been with Palm Tree Dentistry? I have been with Palm Tree Dentistry 39 years. I've been in dentistry for 48 years. Seriously? Yes, I started when I was two. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to just see. get it. <laughs> started in high school. <laughs> well, okay, so when, like, like late in high school? Like in eighth grade? 11th grade. Ele really? Yes. You Freaking fantastic. Thank you. Honest to goodness. That's longer than most marriages. I just want you to know, you've been at the same employment place longer than m a lot of people make it in life with another human mm -hmm. being. And you've seen a lot of human beings come and go in, oh, in your yes. office, I'm sure. Absolutely. So before it was Palm Tree, it was, it was Cobb. Cobb. Yep. Yes. So tell us a little bit about, about where, what it was and then what you have kind of morphed into. Okay. Um, when I started with them, I was, well, when, back when I started in dentistry per se was in high school, it was a um, health communication, uh, health program that was a work program as well. And mm -hmm. I was, my goal was to go into nursing. I and can then, see that. Yeah. And then um, we were all, assigned to as nursing assistants and we would go to school and then we would go home and then go to work from 3 to 11 at night mm. and I did that for a year and then this job came up as a dental assistant a uh, private practice doctor Dr. Phil McManus in Clearwater had was looking for a dental assistant and would do on the job training so I started in dentistry at $1.50 an hour. Get out. No. Holy <laughs> so you think smoke. back, $1.50 an hour, even 48 years ago, was low. But my goal was I didn't have to go. I could go to school, go to work from 11 to 5, and then go home, and then do homework and whatnot. So, I mean, which it was, for your age, that would have been a, like in high school and stuff, that's a pretty sweet deal. It was. Yeah. So, and not working until 11 o'clock at night. A dollar fifty an hour. That's criminal. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. But he trained me, and I fell in love with dentistry, and then I went on to become a dental hygienist. Can you please tell me? <laughs> this is one of my favorite questions to ask. Like, okay, so why, why dentistry? Why not, like, a proctologist assistant, for example? Uh... <laughs> You're still cleaning with dirty things, but Man. Uh, uh, the mouth was much better. <laughs> that would have been a better though? choice. Oh, I would see. Listen, I'm from I'm from the hills of Kentucky and Tennessee, and I would have never chosen dentistry, yeah. at least in staying there, because like just a person's mouth is dirty. It is. Yeah. Although now with all the preventive care, it's a lot better than what it was. True. And if you think about it, 48 years ago, we were. In patients' mouths, <laughs> barehanded. <laughs> oh my God! No masks. <gasps> oh Lord! None of that. Gloves? No like gloves. <gasps> the only time you wore gloves is if you were doing an actual surgery. No. Oh, you've got me thinking back to the very few times as a child that, and you know what? I, you're right. I don't remember him wearing. No. 
Oh, no, they didn't wear mouth. gloves until the 80s. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Great. And people just didn't think nothing about it. I mean, no. obviously, you washed your hands. Right. Obviously, you washed your hands. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. 50 million times. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I had no idea. At first, I, I thought that the pay was bad enough, but then the actual working conditions were worse. <laughs> makes hot water come to my mouth like it makes me kind of sick holy crap like just the things that we subject ourselves to right thank god we're fearfully and wonderfully made and you didn't right. die from some sort uh, of a no. weirdo infection exactly. in your hands or something right god bless. i mean you just never thought about it you just were in people's mouths but barehanded and no masks so all the stuff that was flying around and back then there were belt-driven hand pieces. They're not like the hand pieces on the thing. There was literally a belt that went around the hand pieces. They were belt-driven, so you had that much more splatter. And you think about all the stuff that went in your eyes and your mouth and your <laughs> whatever. <laughs> it's pretty disgusting. <laughs> I almost not a nut lunchtime topic exactly. <laughs> Ooh, oh my gosh. Okay. That's that's taken our conversation to a completely different level. Um, I have so many questions, but I'm going to have to reserve them for off air. Um, wow, bug fifty an hour, still really stuck there because uh, like, I made two thirteen an hour, but that was as a server. Um, mm-hmm. But a dollar fifty an hour, it just mm-hmm. is. But he, ra- I mean, he, he raised me up pretty fast, yeah. So which was great, and then I just fell in love with dentistry and decided I was going to go into hygiene school. So I put myself through hygiene school. Wow. Got married to my sweetheart. And yeah. then right after um, we gra- I graduated high school, or after I graduated hygiene school, got married, got my hygiene license, and I had already been working for Dr. Cobb at the time. Right. And he was a strictly a pedodontist, and I'm like, I'm doing hygiene, which means I'm doing adults, and that's how we opened up the adult practice of so he was practice. only seeing children he was only seeing children okay oh, yeah. that's that's another yeah, level he was of a difficulty pediatric dentistry right we were strictly pediatrics and then he once i became a hygienist um he decided to expand and get a general dentist mm-hmm. and that's when we started doing hygiene uh doing adults so way the parents could come as well as the kids wow yeah. and that was 39 and a half years ago jeez and then it was somewhere in there you got one of the sweetest gifts that God could ever give, which is a beautiful daughter who looks just like you. Yes. Yeah, she does. She's a doll. She's Absolutely amazing. love her. And, um, and okay, so, <laughs> okay, I'm going to try to reel it in in my brain with this whole um, the way things were versus the way things are now. Because, like, you know, we've been through so much in the last couple of years that – like post COVID, I mean, people were wanting to walk around in garbage bags, you know, right. and and a snorkel and mask, and you know, you right. not want to touch anything, breathe any air, uh, and to know that like that's the thing that really stands out in people's minds, I believe. So to hear you talk about um, <laughs> the way things were, were starting out, just wow, wow. Yeah. What, okay, so then what was the protocol for, like, you know, if somebody needed a tooth extraction, which actually just gives me chills up and down my spine just to think about, because you know I'm terrified of dentists. You're the only person I'll let touch me. Right. Um, but, uh, and that was, when we could talk about that. I'm a baby. I'll admit it. Oh, I'm a big baby. I admit it openly. Um, but wh- how did you, how did you take care of people that were, like, big old babies and the, there's an, an extraction and you need to give them Novocaine or whatever it was mm-hmm. that was used. Yeah, it was Novocaine and, you know, topical anesthetic to numb the gums and then Novocaine. But um, that's all we had back then. Now, you know, there's so much other things going on where you can use uh, oral sedation or nitrous oxide sedation. Right. Which I'm personally appreciative of. Right. Very much so. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I so when I was a little girl, I was six, and my grandparents, my grandfather, were Cuban, part Cuban, and so I grew up hearing the story about a little girl named Faya. Uh, no, a little girl named Linda, um, and Linda in Spanish is pretty, mm-hmm. and um, 
you know, Linda, everybody loved Linda. She's so sweet and she's so pretty. Her breath smelled so good and her teeth were always pearly white. And, uh, and then one day she just decided she wasn't going to brush her teeth anymore. And it wasn't very long before her family had to change her name from Linda to Faya, which means ugly. Oh. <laughs> and so I, I grew up hearing that. And so that's how my daddy would motivate me to brush my teeth. You know, we want to have pretty teeth like, you know, tus dentes, uh, yeah, Linda, pero no Faya. Well, I, nobody wants to be ugly. Little girls don't want to be ugly. So no. I'm brushing my teeth with baking soda. Mm-hmm. And that's how I learned how to count 20 times on each side uh-huh. and then 20 times in front. And then you're uh, brushing your tongue with baking soda is awful. Right. But it did it because I didn't know any different. That's right. just what we did. And uh, But I had my first um, dentist appointment and um, talking, oh, in the, in the story about Linda turned to Faya is because she had cavities because she stopped brushing her teeth and she ate too much candy. Okay. And so, so then I get there and it was Dr. Cherry in Springfield, Tennessee. <laughs> Never forget it. And he was a large man, not as tall as my daddy was, but he was every bit as round. Mm-hmm. And he didn't wear deodorant. <sighs> and, and so when he reached over me, he, Daddy sat out in the waiting room, right. and so when Dr. Cherry reached over me, and his pits were like right in my face. It was so bad. It was such a horrible experience, and um, and so that that was enough horridness to get over. But then he said that he found, oh, Angela, I found a cavity. I'm gonna have to tell your daddy which one is it. And he showed me which tooth it was. By the time he walked out there, told my daddy that I had a cavity, and he walked back in, I was like, you go back out and you tell my daddy I don't have any cavities. I pulled that dang tooth. Wow. It was a baby tooth, obviously, but it wasn't loose. It was not a loose (laughs) tooth. And I pulled that sucker. I didn't want to be Faya. Right. And, like, I know that... (laughs) I know that my story is ridiculous, and I'm sure that, but I'm sure that you've but heard so many. There are so many stories. Stories, out there. yeah. What's one of the most? Because uh, I know that one's on the ridiculous level. What is another ridiculous story that you've been told? Oh, gosh. for terror from a child. Oh, to an adult. Same thing with cavities, but they've taken uh, dental floss or what have you, or and they've come in with either half of a broken tooth because they tried to pull it with a plier. Oh God. Or. <laughs> They've come in with dental floss stuck around it because of <laughs> they were trying to pull it like Just with the old fashioned right yeah fatal attempt to pull a tooth because they didn't want to get it. Wow. So there's more just like you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Minus the sweaty pits in a six year old's face was just oh, so gross. That's just disgusting. Yeah. I'm sorry. So so very disgusting. That was counseling for a little while. Um <laughs> you, know, that, you laugh, I'm not kidding. That's, it was terrible. Um, but it created such anxiety for me that you remember what I was like when I came in last year, year before last, to have my teeth clean just to have them cleaned and I was ready to crawl out of my shoes and like it was just thank you so much for being so kind (laughs) that's what we're here for very kind very patient very understanding you didn't rush me you didn't make me feel stupid for being at the time 49 years old and what do you mean why are you still scared about that I was actually very grateful that that like None of that was part of that experience. Y'all were really great with me. And because that's of that, what we do. told everybody about you guys. And that's why I'm still in dentistry, because I love what I do. Yeah. And I love helping others get over those fears. Yeah. Because I'm going to tell you, there's some fears that happen in life that stick with you, like, for forever. And a oh, dentist yeah. is one of them. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, your your nerve endings go to, you know, particular parts of your body. Right. And, and I will take almost any kind. Of, I would almost rather have my son the size he is now than have any type of mouth pain. It's mouth just pain's the worst. Horrible. It's horrible. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. I have questions. Okay. What causes a person to grind their teeth? Most of the time, it's subconscious and it's stress. Okay. We see a lot of that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Subconscious yeah. and stress. So. Yep. And it usually happens at night. Um, 
sometimes during the day if they're going through stressful periods. I mean, I have a night guard that I wear that there's times that I need to wear it during the day. Oh, wow. Uh -huh. Really? Yeah. Dang. I've never heard of that before. I know but, my dad used to grind his teeth, and you could hear him across the whole mm -hmm. living room. The living room was huge, and you could hear him, and it would just it'd send chills on your spine. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes it's also do if you hear have kids grinding and yeah. that, like those. A lot of times, it's usually the six year olds yeah. and then like the ten, eleven year olds mm -hmm. that are grinding at night, and that's because their back molars are erupting. And they're trying to find their bite. And it's oh. all subconscious, but um, yeah. That makes sense because my granddaughter is doing that now too. And she, you she's can hear her across the room. Yes. And she's probably teething. They're oh. getting those molars in. Bless her little heart. Yep. Bless all their little hearts. Mm -hmm. um, we have a great working relationship with our office. We sure do. Yeah. Um, because there's actually a chiropractic adjustment that helps to relieve the TMJ issue sometimes completely but at least in in you know gives temporary it, relief like well, immediately yeah exactly isn't that how you came to our office i came because of neck and back pain because oh. of 40 some odd years of working well, yeah, over being patients like this. <laughs> yeah being like the letter c with yes. legs all day yeah exactly so that's why i originally came but i've always had tmj problems since I was in my teens and um, I went to TMJ specialist and what have you and everybody wanted to cut you open and do surgery oh. and everybody that has had TMJ surgery I can guarantee you they've had to have more than one yeah or will have to have more than one and I was bound and determined that I'm going to either live with it and live mm. with the pain and Dr. John has got my mouth so perfect that's, with the TMJ adjustments. That's fantastic. I don't think that I've ever heard you articulate it quite like that, so that's no, really encouraging. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm pain-free. I wear my mouth guard. And um, the nice part is, is we've got, a, like I said, we've got a great working relationship. Yeah. Dr. John will get their jaws in line for us so that way we can put the bite guard in when the jaws are in perfect alignment right. so that way they stay that way. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Huh. That gives us a whole nother line of things to talk about uh, in the office. I, I right. didn't realize that that was actually how the process went. Um, right. But it makes complete sense. Right. Makes complete sense. Um, you guys, okay, so thinking about like some of the worst things and some of the best things that a person can do to actually take care of their hygiene and their mouth, I know that on your website there is a picture of um, like drinking milk is good for your teeth, building strong bones, and um, obviously brush your freaking teeth. <laughs> like, please brush and your floss. teeth. <laughs> so I was <laughs> Flossing. <laughs> we have to talk about the flossing and why flossing is so important. Gentlemen, listen, anybody that is listening to, or ever watching this show, this might be one of the most important life tips that you get ever. Floss your teeth because there is a correlation between your your dental hygiene and other areas of, of I don't want to say hygiene, but health in your body. Cheryl, what happens to a man if he regularly or chronically or doesn't floss? Okay. Huh. Um, fl flossing leads to so much because if you're not flossing, that plaque and bacteria gets into your bloodstream. Okay. okay. It causes and it can exacerbate diabetes, heart problems. Um, once you have periodontal disease, you, you have it for life. Periodontal oh, disease wow. is like diabetes. Once you have it, you've got it. You've just got to arrest it and keep it under control. And that's what you do with uh, more frequent cleanings, deeper cleanings, and not know extremely that. great oral hygiene. So, um, like I said, there's so many health issues, and one of the Leading ones now that you're waiting to hear is it can cause erectile dysfunction. Oh, my goodness gracious. So, yes, that's, um, and you can Google it, and you will see it out there. If well, don't do a deep Google. Your phone might get AIDS or something, but... <laughs> 
I will never forget when I was in the room, and I mean, you could have heard a pen drop in all of the men's faces that were in the room. Was oh, it was priceless. Mm-hmm. And I didn't realize how true it was. So I did look it up, not that I didn't think that you were telling the truth, but I was just like, well, there's got to be more to this. And then when I was reading the, like the, the, the cause and effect right. of you, you do this, you get this. You don't do this, then these are the things that, that can come right. as a result of that. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Erectile dysfunction. Floss your teeth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And what one are of the some, best things out there now are the water flossers. They're fantastic. Yeah, they're weird at first. If you've never they used are. it and you don't have the angle right, um, you it will smell make... the color nine if you ain't careful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah. Because <laughs> I got, oh, man. and it, it But it gets everything out of there. It sure does. And, yeah. yeah you like you're getting up underneath the gum and you didn't mean to. That's where you smell That's the color where, nine. Yep. Well, that's what you're supposed to be getting out because that, that bacteria is sitting in there, and that's what's going in. That plaque and bacteria gets into your bloodstream, and that's one of the leading heart causes, heart attacks, strokes, uh, high blood pressure, diabetes, all these health issues, uh, preterm babies, low birth babies. Really? Erectile dysfunction, all of it. Oh, uh, you ain't even going to get a baby if you've got erectile dysfunction. So, right. I mean. <laughs> Causes all kinds of life problems <laughs> if you just don't fl- just floss your teeth, people. Right. It causes it. it and creates that's what a- we're about is all your total health, not just a healthy yeah. mouth, because a healthy mouth is what leads to a healthy body. That's I see that I see it now in a completely different light. And we've been knowing each other for a few years now, mm-hmm. and I never thought of my mouth. In, in such a way as I am right at this particular second. <laughs> I'm going to make a couple of changes uh, when I get home, actually, mm-hmm. and I'm going to have to find that water pick because I had, we changed out the, the head in our, in our shower, our shower head, and mm-hmm. so we just didn't hook it back up. I'm hooking that sucker back up. Yes, ma'am. Today. <laughs> um, other things that shouldn't that we shouldn't do that maybe they aren't so so much well i mean smoking is bad for you smoking is just bad smoking, for you yes. but like coffee like those of us who love coffee and love tea black tea specifically those things that i mean because our teeth are porous right mm-hmm. and um and, but the enamel can be stained what are some things that we can do outside of quitting drinking coffee and tea uh, one of the things is if you're drinking, um, and I can't drink coffee, in a, a hot cup of coffee right, with a straw, but um, drinking through a straw will help eliminate stains. True. Um, and then just brushing and flossing afterwards. If you can't brush or floss after drinking a lot of, you know, stained beverages, Coca-Cola is a big stain. Yeah. And so are a lot of your fruit juices. Hmm. Pomegranate juice will stain your teeth. So will blueberry or, you know, any of the grape juices in that. So um, if you can't, uh, if you're not near a toothbrush or anything, rinse with water afterwards. Yeah, in the very yeah. least. Yeah, at the so least. To get the residual yeah. off. Mm-hmm. Gosh. Listen, I am... <laughs> We have such great guests, and and I and I always end like, oh, this is the best one. But this has been so enlightening. Um, I really feel like, as far as education, this might be probably one of the best ones that we've had. Floss your teeth; it's very important. Um, <laughs> your dental um, um, hygiene routine, if you don't have one. You know what? Reaching out to Palm Tree Dentistry, there are so many different ways. Y'all have made it very easy to be reached. You've got multiple locations. Um, you've really grown from Cobb to Palm Tree. You're up in Hernando County, Pasco, Pinellas, um, different offices, different places. Mm-hmm. We even um, have Winter Haven, right? Uh, Lakeland, Brandon. Yeah. Yeah. So there's no reason why you should delay your oral hygiene being addressed. You should definitely go to Palm Tree Dentistry. That is where I go. Um, And now I'm going to be going again very, very soon because I feel like I'm overdue. Even if I'm not, I am. Um, And so follow them on all of their social media platforms. Um, You know, go to their website. You can book online for a consult. And uh, it's absolutely worth it. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being here and being part of this, Cheryl. We absolutely love you and everything that you've shared with us today. Thank you. And make sure that you don't 
don't miss a show. Uh, we have great guests. We give great information, keeping you uh, <laughs> just apprised to the very best information that you definitely need, like your oral hygiene. So follow us on all of our platforms, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. And uh, just remember at Tarpon Total Healthcare, Dr. John is providing spinal adjustments you can trust so you too can stand corrected.